Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In a recent video by Lynette Tsang, an expert in the field of finance and economics, she delves into the state of the consumer in the United States, particularly in relation to inflation, debt, and the changing economic landscape. The video starts with an interesting insight from the Procter & Gamble CEO, highlighting how the consumer seems to be holding up well despite economic challenges. However, Zhang raises crucial questions about the sustainability of this situation and the underlying issues that need our attention. Procter & Gamble, a household name for many, has managed to thrive even after implementing a 10% price hike amidst rising inflation. This raises a question that has been on the minds of many. Are corporations using inflation as an opportunity to boost their profits? Zhang, with her extensive knowledge, prompts viewers to think about the potential consequences of such actions on inflation rates and consumer choices. Zhang then explores the resilience of the U.S. consumer. She notes that unlike their European counterparts, American consumers tend to stick with brand names. However, she raises doubts about this being entirely true and emphasizes that consumers are increasingly relying on debt to maintain their standard of living. This reliance on debt is not new and, in Zhang's view, was designed into the fiat money system from the outset, which she finds disheartening. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. Procter & Gamble CEO says the consumer is holding up extremely well. Now, Procter & Gamble is, I don't have anything in my house that I know of that is part of there, but they're pretty mainstream. And they rake in those profits after that 10% price hike amid inflation. And as I've shown you before, a lot of these corporations have used the cover of inflation to generate even greater profits. Now, I'm wondering, do you think that could add to the inflation? And if there is a necessity, do you think that people are still going to have to buy it? Maybe they trade down in quality a little bit, but you know, you got to eat. I mean, there are things that you just have to do. Frankly, it is a flipping fantasy. The U.S. consumer, consumer is holding up well. Mm. Unlike European customers, U.S. consumers are sticking with brand names. Well... I'm not really sure that that's 100% true, but they are indeed taking on debt to sustain and maintain a standard of living. And quite honestly, when they created the fiat money system to begin with, they absolutely knew that this is what was going to happen. And it was part of the plan. And it's really disgusting because when you have, sla when you have debt, you're a slave right? Gold is the, what is it? Gold is the money of kings. Silver is the money of peasants. And debt is the money of slaves. I'd rather be a king or a peasant and have my real money than be a slave debt. Because if that's the case, you, then you have no choices. You've given up your freedom. You've given up your choices. So the question is, if you're taking on debt, how long can the consumer keep this up? Because at some point, you're not going to be able to take on more debt. And we do know, we've talked about this so many times in the past, more young adults, but more people are living paycheck to paycheck. Rising cost of living creates generational differences, and the share of young adults struggling to cover the bills are rising. So this is the black is March of 22 and the blue is March of 23. This is the rate of change year over year. And yeah, Gen Z is taking on a lot more. They're living paycheck to paycheck and they're really struggling financially. But millennials aren't doing a whole lot better. Look at this. Maybe more of the Gen Z. But good God, millennials, you're already up to 73.2%. Gen X, 64.2%. And then the baby boomers and the seniors, 49.5% living from paycheck to paycheck. Gen X is getting ready. I mean, this is when they're building their retirement income. And baby boomers and seniors, this is when they're using that retirement income. This is a problem. This is a big problem. And it's not getting any better. 
Zhang passionately articulates her perspective on debt, likening it to a form of modern slavery. She argues that debt strips individuals of their freedom and choices, making them vulnerable to economic fluctuations. In this context, she highlights the importance of precious metals like gold and silver as forms of real money that can protect one's wealth and financial freedom. One of the central questions posed by Zhang is the sustainability of consumer debt. As more individuals live paycheck to paycheck, it becomes increasingly difficult for them to take on additional debt. Zhang highlights that rising living costs are creating generational disparities, with younger generations struggling even more to cover their bills. Zhang presents alarming statistics about the retirement crisis in the United States. She notes that many older Americans have not saved adequately for their later years, and a significant percentage of those aged 59 and older have no retirement savings at all. This, she argues, is a looming catastrophe, especially considering the rising costs of health care for aging Americans. But at least it's getting better for Gen X and baby boomers, I suppose. I don't really agree with that. I think we've got a lot more problems ahead. Because most of the largest occupations are still below average wages. I mean, we can see this retail, home health care, general ops managers, fast food and counter workers, cashiers, nurses. Well, they're a little bit above, but laborers, customer services representatives, don't get me started on that one, stockers and order fillers, office clerks, janitors, waiters. I mean, these are all well below other than the registered nurse and the general and ops managers. These are all well below the average wages. This is a problem. Many up to $250,000 a year wage earners are still talking about being paycheck to paycheck. 1971, 9,500 bucks could support a family of four with one wage earner. Now you need two and you're still paycheck to paycheck. But many older Americans haven't even begun to save for retirement. So that means they're going to be dependent upon social security. Yikes. 27% of people age 59 and older have no money set aside for their later years. 27%. Does it get less expensive as you get older? Well, not if you're not healthy. It gets more and more expensive. So we know we have a global crisis. But for those aging Americans who do, do have retirement accounts, persistent inflation has thwarted their plans, worsening the seven trillion retirement savings shortfall. And the, you know the worst part about it? It's all by design. None of this was really necessary when we had a good money system, when we had restrictions on how much debt we could accumulate, when the system was more fair. When In the beginning, if you did not like what the government was doing, you'd go in and you'd swap a $20 bill for a $20 gold coin, pull the gold out of the system and create restrictions around what governments could do. They had to take that away. Next is their ability to easily go below zero. That's coming up with CBDCs in this new digital world. Become your own central banker. I'm just saying. An average 80% of the population ends up in extreme poverty as we go through these transitions. And I'm going to tell you, do not believe them if they say, well, we bring out the CBDCs, there will be no more inflation and everything will be fine. That's not the end of it. They have to take all of your wealth to start over with. So don't believe them until there's a component of gold in there. Persistent inflation further exacerbates the retirement crisis as it erodes the purchasing power of retirement savings. Zhang underscores that this crisis is not a coincidence, but a result of deliberate financial policies. Zhang warns viewers about the potential consequences of the introduction of central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, without the inclusion of a component like gold. She cautions that these digital currencies could lead to significant wealth redistribution and even extreme poverty for a substantial portion of the population. Zhang reveals shocking statistics regarding negative net worth among different age groups. A concerning number of young adults, especially Gen Z and Millennials, report having zero or negative net worth. This grim financial reality extends to older generations as well. The video concludes by examining consumer loans and their delinquency rates. Zhang raises concerns about the massive amount of consumer debt turned into securities and sold to investors. 
she points out that delinquency rates on consumer loans have surged, with the four largest U.S. lenders writing off billions in bad loans. This trend, she argues, signals trouble ahead for those invested in these products. But more than 30% of respondents said their net worth is zero or less, meaning they have more debts than assets. That's especially true for younger generations with 41% of Gen Z and 38% of millennials saying they have zero or negative net worth. For people age 59 and over, that number was 21%. That is scary. And do you, by the way, have anybody in any areas where you might have to help? Because this is, we're all in this together and we're going to have to help. Today, you have a choice. You have a choice to accumulate physical gold and silver and make sure that you are secure in food, water, energy, as well as security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. Get it done. We are running out of time and we are running out of choices. Consumer loans, let's just look at what this looks like because this is how people have been doing it. And you can see this, this graph goes back to 2000 and I think 10. And you can see that the answer always is more debt. And this is revolving credit. So look, this was 2000, this was 2020 and they pumped all of this money into the system. This is where we stand right now. I'm telling you, is that sustainable? Up, up and up. But I wanna show you this. Now, so what they're saying is consumer loans, credit cards, and other revolving plans at all commercial banks are $983.1513 billion. That's a lot. However, as of February 2023, the most current numbers, 1.220.37297 trillion dollars has been turned into a security and sold to you. I think it's interesting that Wall Street has sold more consumer debt products than there are consumer debt. Now you're counting on these products. You are counting on people having the ability to continue to pay for this debt. Can they? We're about to find out because what we know is that delinquency rates on consumer loans at all commercial banks are up very substantially. So if you have any of this garbage product in your portfolio, you might want to think about getting rid of it while you still can. The four biggest U.S. lenders wrote off a combined $3.4 billion in bad consumer loans in the first three months of 2023. That is, my friends, a 73% increase from a year earlier. Now, it was worse going into 2020, but you can see the change. So this was all of the money that they gave to the consumers so the consumers could continue to spend and also pay down their debt. So again, they could continue to spend. And then all the money printing, all that inflation. I mean, the writing is on the wall. Can you read it? Because I really suggest that you do. Oh,